Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Inyoma. First off, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has liked, shared, and subscribed to my channel. I really do appreciate it. I enjoy making these videos because I want to and because I hope that they can be helpful to someone. So please continue to like, share, and subscribe and join me on my journey towards financial independence and as I share reviews and about you know living a sustainable plant-based lifestyle. So straight to the point of this video, this is going to be about a black vision board. Nobody in this world who has access to any kind of communication is unaware of what has been going on in the United States because of police brutality and systemic racism and oppression against black people in this country and the protests that have erupted are just a natural reaction to hundreds and hundreds of years of oppression that will not let up and even though it has come and become masked in so many ways we've always known that it was there the only difference now is that we have cell phone cameras to record the police not that that deters them because a lot of them just get off anyway because the court system is also rigged to be in their favor so that's why you're able to see a police officer casually put his hands in his pockets as he murders someone live on video that's where we are in this country right now a lot of people are doing the necessary work of peacefully protesting we're not going to talk about the people that are looting and rioting because we all know most of those people are not part of the black lives matter movement a lot of those people are not even black a lot of them are cops a lot of them are undercover white supremacist agents who are there to start riots and detract from the movements but the vast majority of people are peacefully protesting and what is police doing shoving back with violence so the purpose of my video today is just to talk about what we can do as black people as people of color as white people who are supporting this movement and who are becoming allies and who are using their privilege to speak up and try and make a difference what can we do the reason that segregation ended the reason that we started to have places where black people are freely allowed to travel and to buy food without having to go through a separate door or drink water from a separate fountain a lot of that was due to the hard work of people who protested during the civil rights era of the 1950s and 60s a lot of that was also due to common economic sense when white business owners saw that their customers their black customers needed to be able to spend money freely and travel freely a lot of segregation began to end and it has become evident that america literally respects nothing but power why was it that so many of the people who um, attacked during 9 11 were from the country of saudi arabia did America step foot in Saudi Arabia to go fight them? No, because Saudi Arabia has an immense amount of power. They have oil, they have wealth, and America wasn't going to do jack to them. So America decided they were going to go invade Iraq and Afghanistan. Why? Because they ain't got power. It's the same reason that African countries don't really have power to stand up to China and to stand up to the U.S. when they impose ridiculous economic trade policies on us it's because we don't have as much power as they do. So the point of this video is basically just to try and discuss with you guys ways that we can have some power so that we can improve the standing of black people in this country. Ways that we can take back power for ourselves from a socioeconomic perspective. You will notice that a lot of charts will show you that when it comes to wealth in the United States of America, black people are bottom last i think one chart showed that for every a hundred dollars or so that a white family owned black people owned about five dollars in comparison which is just heartbreaking it is an astronomical difference and a lot of this not only is it not taught in schools a lot of it is simply impossible for some families who are stuck in this rut of generational poverty due to redlining due to you know, schools not allowing people into proper districts because, you know, they want to keep it segregated. We have more segregated schools now. Isn't that crazy? It's 2020. We have segregated schools again. So it seems like history is just repeating itself. So what can we do? I plan to protest not only with my vote, which we absolutely should do. We should vote on a local level. We need to vote these corrupt um, mayors out, these corrupt governors, these corrupt state senators, we need to vote them out. It starts at the local level. So we need to pay attention when primary seasons come around. We need to make sure that our vote 
counts and we get other people to vote as well. So yes, I definitely plan on using my vote to make a difference by God's grace. But I also plan on using my dollars to make a difference. Now we can research companies that are racist and have racist policies or people that are subtle with it but are you know donating massive amounts of money to the trump re-election campaign and yes trump is a racist and a white supremacist period point blank we can do that and it helps to know what which, which companies are doing these things but for a lot of black people in neighborhoods where oh this is the only grocery store this is the only place i can buy you know food or plants or water whatever it is they ain't got the option of just not shopping there they still have to shop there to survive so while that's good and those of us that can research and make the decision not to shop in those places anymore can do that, we can also make sure that we are keeping money in black families, in black neighborhoods, and thereby trying to escape the cycle of generational poverty. A lot of black children don't know the importance of saving and investing, investing in the stock market, investing in real estate, knowing how to play the game so that you can actually win and be on the same level as the white people who are trying to keep a lot of this wealth and power for themselves. So I think that we need to start there. We need to start reading books like The Simple Path to Wealth. We need to start reading books like The Intelligent Investor, books like The Wealthy Gardener, books like How to um, Begin Real Estate Investing, Real Estate Investing for Dummies, any kind of information that we can get our hands on. We need to get there. We need to start reading, educating ourselves so that we can pass on this knowledge to our progeny so that they can be in a better position. They will see the actions that we are making for ourselves. They will see where it leads the family and therefore they will be able to say, oh, this is the right path or maybe this is not the right path. I was not taught any of this in school. I had to learn it now as a 30 year old woman. So I think we need to start there. We need to start educating ourselves about ways to build generational wealth. Focus on buying assets rather than liabilities. Yes, looking good is important. I mean, it is. It just is. Everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants, everybody wants to you know, look put together. But there are sacrifices that can be made when possible to make sure that we channel our income and our resources towards things that are going to help us improve our standing in, in society in a financial way, not to look good for white people, none of that, but rather to get some economic power in our hands so that when we speak, they have to listen. So here's my Black Vision Board idea. Step one, in what ways can I improve my current income? What side hustles can I, can I do? What hobbies do I have that could possibly generate income? Because that's the first step towards being able to save and invest is to have enough income to pay for your daily activities like, you know, water and eating and having a roof over your head, but also to have sufficient amounts to save and invest. So what ways can I maximize my income? What dream am I afraid to pursue? What dream are you afraid to pursue that could be used to maximize your income? I just, I'm trying to learn to think of it in a sense of what is the absolute worst thing that could happen if I choose to pursue this particular dream? Is it really that bad? Most of the time the answer is no. So I'm trying to be bold enough to pursue dreams that I know that God has placed in my heart that could be used to not only maximize my income but to be a blessing to my family and to my community. So that's step number one. What ways can I maximize my income to improve my future and my family's future from an economic standpoint. Step number two, how will you improve your credit score and by what date? You need to set a date because that's how goals get achieved is when you actually have a time stamp on them. Find out, read books, you guys, um, Google, YouTube, ways to improve your credit score, even simply by making payments on time and decreasing your, your um, debt to credit ratio. Just find a way to improve your credit score. There's so many of us in our communities who are struggling with debt and with bad credit, which prevents us from getting access to good loans and interest rates. So step number two, credit, credit score, very important in this country at least. So find out how you can improve your credit score and then pursue that and make it a priority in your life. Step number three, set a goal for how much you wanna to save towards something. So for me personally, I'm saving towards purchasing an investment property, right? So my goal, and I'm gonna speak this out loud because <laughs> I wanna make sure that I hold myself accountable. My goal is to have $14,000 saved by March. 
and that is just to add to the down payment that I'm going to be putting towards this investment property. So that is my personal goal is to have $14,000 saved by March 2021. What is your goal? You can have an amount of money saved for an emergency fund. You can have an amount of money saved towards investment in the stock market, which is a great time now because a lot of stocks have taken a deep dive and it would be good for you to just get in now while you can. Or you can have money saved towards real estate. Even better, save towards all three. There are so many ways that we can compromise in our personal lives, things that we think we need but we don't necessarily need. And... I think that if we set aside those funds instead towards making a life-changing investment, man, we could set ourselves and our community up for a much better future. So I hope you take that into consideration and I hope that you actually make a sacrifice in your personal life to try and figure out ways that you can invest funds for your future so that you can become financially free, not just you, but your children, your grandchildren, y'all, white people have been doing this for generations. A lot of it has been at the expense of black people and other communities of color, including indigenous communities. But it's kind of time to take back that power from them. And this is how we do it. So step number four is how am I going to support black business? What are ways that I'm going to invest in black communities? And my church is doing a Juneteenth um, a blackout kind of event where we only buy black we only support black businesses and as much as we can because you know I actually can't think of any grocery stores that are black owned in my neighborhood so we're doing it with the goal of intentionally supporting black businesses and that's something that I've taken for granted over the years because I just don't think about where I'm buying I just go on Amazon literally I go on Amazon I read the reviews and I order so this is going to be a sacrifice for me but it's a wonderful sacrifice it's one that I'm happy 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 to pay because it is evidence more than ever that our black communities need support and how I'm going to support black businesses is by researching ways that I can shift my addiction from Amazon towards more local black businesses while also keeping in mind step number three which is making sure that i'm saving and investing my income towards my goal of purchasing an investment property so those are four simple steps one maximize your income in a creative way you know just think about the dreams that you're looking towards um, achieving the goals that you're looking towards achieving Try and go for them and see if it'll help double or triple your income, whatever way it is, even if it just increases it by $500 a month. Whatever that is, it's something. It's better than nothing. So maximize your income. Increase your credit score because that's very important to get good lending rates. And then we save and invest towards a goal set a goal it needs to be a number that is realistic but also that is lofty enough that is going to require a sacrifice on your part and then finally support black businesses wherever you are just a comment two comments actually one comment is about the black power phrase that a lot of white people are afraid of <laughs> i think it will be evident that if black people wanted revenge for what white people have inflicted on the black race for hundreds of years we would have sought revenge by now. Most black people literally just want equality and justice. And if we think about the black power movement and everything that they have done, it has literally just been to support black people, to empower black people, to help them get a semblance of equality and justice in the United States, in the UK, wherever black people are basically. They have just tried to do that. Now, just compare that to the white power movement. Every single time white power creeps up, it's usually for a violent and nefarious purpose. What have they done that is good? Even white power is used to discriminate against other white people like Jews. It's just, it's mind boggling to me how people are afraid of the phrase black power. All you have to do is what the Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. The fruits of white power are clearly evident, bad, rotten, just a horrible, horrible, horrible situation. And yet people keep saying that black power is the same thing. It's really not. It's really not. And that's very evident. So that's my first comment. My second comment is as a Nigerian American woman, I grew up in both the United States and in Nigeria. And I can 100% tell y'all this. We learned nothing, nothing 
about the plight of our brothers and sisters in the United States, in the UK, in the Caribbean, in South America, in Nigeria. We literally learn nothing about the way that America has treated black people. Not only that, we learn nothing about our own history pre-colonialism. You know, it's just insane the number that Europeans, um, the, the, the amount of horrific crimes that Europeans have inflicted upon the African psyche and the psyche of Africans in, di in diaspora is that we don't even learn our own history. Our own history begins with the Europeans came. A lot of African-American history is taught with the ins they were enslaved and brought over to the United States. And it's just, oh my gosh, it just annoys me so much that I had to learn all of this as an adult from my African-American colleagues, from my African-American friends, and from reading books and from watching movies. And I'm just like, what? It's just insane. So just a comment to people that are Nigerian and living back home and other Africans who may not fully understand why black Americans are so incensed and so, you know, enraged with the events that have been going on for hundreds of years now, is just please do a little history and learn about it because we are not taught any of that back home and we're not taught it here in school. You just have to be here to see it because a lot of us grew up having this rosy picture of the United States and of the UK where everything is good, you know, and black people are free and everybody is just, as long as you work hard, you're going to achieve everything. That is only true to an extent. When a whole system is working against you to actively make sure they put you in your place, there's only so far that you can go without pushing back against the system. And that's the situation that we find ourselves in right now. So I 100% want to encourage people that are Nigerian who are African to not only research the history of racism in the West against black people, but also our own history with the way that the UK, you know, brutalized us in, in Nigeria and in forming that country, which is just ridiculous, the way they came up with, with our name and everything. And the Spanish and the Portuguese and the, the French, especially, my Lord, everybody has done a number on us, but just change your perspective. Change your perspective, learn, educate yourself, I knew nothing about this, even as um, a student in pharmacy school, I would argue with my black American colleagues because they would tell me about police brutality and about racism in the States and how it's different for them. And I'd be like, no, it's not because I was never taught and because I never cared enough to educate myself. Well, I do now and I'm going to make sure that if God gives me kids in the future, they for sure know because the textbooks these days are teaching kids that slavery was a migration, a migration, y'all. Anyway, so those are my two comments and my little rants. Just want to back it all up, guys. This is just about having a black vision board for yourself, making sure that you are buying black to support black businesses, making sure that you are improving your credit, making sure that you are maximizing your income and that you are saving and investing so that we can have some economic power to fight back against this system. And that's, that's it. That's all. Um, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Sorry for the long video. And I will catch you on my next one. Bye. God bless and stay safe.